Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well, this is Shaden here from Devil Cube and I'm back again today with another awesome tutorial and this is going to be an illustrator we're going to be learning to create another cool esports or mascot style text effect now this is the third version i have made two versions in the past i'll link them down below in the description they have been getting a lot of actually a lot of support and a lot of views over the past few months i've released it and i thought to create another version to show you a different style of an esports text so without further ado let's get started So here I am in Illustrator and this is the final result of what we're going to be creating today. I'm just going to keep this as a reference so I can pick the colors from and kind of get a feel of how the uh, look should be. But anyways, uh, I'm going to just take this and drag this over to the side and I'm going to start afresh. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard to get the type tool or I can just click on the button to get the type tool. I'm just going to click and I'm going to probably type esports all right and uh, you probably can't see it now so i'm just gonna go ahead and just change this to a color uh, white for now all right so oops just set that to white okay and uh, obviously it's important to choose the right font so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to my properties panel and if you don't have this new layout you can go to essentials and just choose essentials in the workspace and you're gonna get this cool looking panel and I'm going to choose a font called as subspace. So it's going to kind of look something like this. All right, subspace. So once we have our text like so, I'm just going to go and make this pretty big so we can see it. And I'm going to actually go to alignment and center this. And also uh, center this horizontally. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to give this a little bit of spacing. So I'm going to go and uh, probably set this to like 50, uh, which is a good amount. So make sure you have enough space because as you can see over here, we're going to need a little bit of space and then I'm going to go to object and choose um, expand and once I expand just click on OK. So once you expand it, you can't edit the text. So make sure you choose the right text and I want to do is I'm going to select this right click and choose ungroup and then I'm going to select the first letter and I'm going to select the last letter and just hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm going to scale this up pretty high, uh, you know, like probably something like so. Okay, uh, it looks a little crazy right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this over so we get a good amount of spacing. Okay, that's good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all this and I'm going to come to the alignment or right over here and set this to vertically aligned center. So now it looks like this, just like, you know, the last letters are pretty uh, big. Okay, I think this is a little too much. So I'm going to shrink this down a tiny bit like so. And then move this over across to the side and move this over to the side as well. All right. Then we're going to select this and align center. And it's looking pretty cool. And a couple of things what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A on my keyboard or come here to get the direct selection tool. I'm going to select this point that we have and then just move this over a little bit. So it, uh, the sharp is more evident. And I can even take this uh, point and kind of bring it down a touch like so. All right. Uh, that's okay. That's looking, let me just move this up a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, and we're going to kind of have to do the same thing over this side, but as you can see, the S doesn't have anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this point. Uh, I'm going to come over here and then just move it over like so. Okay. And I'm going to select this point, press P on my keyboard. And uh, as, it, as I come on this point, you can see a minus a dash line under the anchor point. I'm just going to click on that and that's going to get rid of that point. I'm going to select this point with my direct selection tool and I'm going to click on the circle and just create a tiny, you know, uh, like a curve like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, get my pen tool and I'm going to draw in, uh, hold down shift and then manually draw in a shape like we did uh, for uh, the other letter. Right. Uh, so let's see if it looks proportionate. Well, it definitely does not. So we're going to go and select this. Uh, make sure you press A, select the anchor point and then move this over a little bit over to the side and also bring this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all this, press Ctrl G to group them. And then I'm going to come here to my effect. I'm going to go to warp and then I'm going to choose arc. Okay, now this is going to look crazy, but we want to choose actually arc upper or actually let's choose arch. Yeah, we want an arch. And then the bend is something that we're going to reduce drastically. 
So let's say something around uh, 10 or 11, something would look good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. And it does, it looks pretty weird right now. So we're gonna have to go to object and choose expand appearance. And that's gonna look something like this. Now, as you can see, we have this nice perspective feel to it. So let's do the same thing. So I'm gonna select this text and come over here to this uh, um, option which says free to start tool. I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna choose this one, which is perspective to start. And once I click on that, I can come here to the corner and then just manually move this inside. And there you go. We have this cool perspective looking text just as we want. Okay, so once we have the text that's looking like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to object. I'm going to go to choose path and I'm going to choose offset path. And uh, I'm going to click on preview. And as you can see, when I click on preview, we're going to get something that looks like this. But uh, we want to make sure that we get the right size. So I'm going to go to the offset and reduce that a tiny bit uh, to say, say, around uh, four to four pixels. And uh, you can go ahead and increase the meter limit in. Um, what that does is sometimes the uh, the sharpness doesn't come with the offset path and if you increase this uh, to let's say 10 to be it on the safer side uh, it's going to end up sharp on the sharp edges uh, usually where it doesn't sometimes so i'm going to go ahead and click on okay okay so now we have two layers and i'm going to right click and choose ungroup so we have each individual Oops, we have individual layers like so. But as you can see, we have some issues over here. So we're gonna fix that really quick. So I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to get the pen tool and my uh, and press the minus sign. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this one anchor point. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Delete this anchor point and delete this anchor point. But that would actually make it a little actually uh, kind of weird. Uh, so in that case, I would have to select this point, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and just round off the edge like so. And uh, that looks much more natural and realistic. Okay, now that fixes the problem. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the ones that are inside. So hold down Shift and then select the ones that are inside. Make sure you don't select anything else. Okay, press Control G to group them. And I'm gonna click on this button, which is gonna add a gradient to this. And we're gonna go to the start point. And uh, let's choose a yellow color. And I can come over here on this one, double click on that. And I can choose, set this to be, um, this dark orange okay okay and then i'm going to come here to the angle and set this to negative 90 oh sorry negative 90 that's right so if we look at this uh you see that we have it to be yellow and you know so on so actually for this what i'm going to do is i'm not going to set this to yellow i'm going to set this to a the lighter version of the orange and this one I think has to be a darker orange so what we are going to do about that is just add that all right uh, so once we have this we can select the ones at the back right now actually so hold down shift and select the ones at the back all right okay and then we can press ctrl g to group the ones at the back and this time you can press I on my keyboard and then just click on this button. which is going to automatically apply that shade, but then it looks a little weird. So what we have to do is uh, we're going to select uh, uh, the start color and, uh, and we're going to set this to yellow. And then we're going to set this to again to a negative 90 degree on the angle. Right. And now when I close this, you see that it starts with yellow and then it has the orange inside the end and then it kind of fades to, you know, a darker version right here, which is looking pretty good right now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to select the ones at the back that we have, all right, and then make a copy of pressing Control C and Control F, okay, and this time I'm going to set the color of this to yellow, so you know it's pure yellow, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, arrange, and choose send to back, so it's completely at the back, you can't see it, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys and move this down slightly like so. So there you go. You can see this kind of, uh, uh, you know, like 3D effect. Um, you can move this up or down depending on how much 3D effect you want, but that's completely uh, left to you. So once we move them down, we see that we have these kind of uh, irregular um, points uh, that are protruding, which don't look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A on my keyboard, select this, and then just move these points inside because we don't want them to be visible. So let's just, we can just take them and uh, move them inside. There we go. Uh, we can move this inside as well. Uh, we can move this a little bit or we can leave it like so. Okay. Uh, I think this is pretty good. Uh, we can take this point again and move this over inside. Okay. Same thing. We can move this over uh, to the inside. All right. Um, whoops. Let's put this back here. 
Okay. And I think it's looking uh, pretty good. Uh, let's actually select this and bring this down a little bit more. So just a little bit more like so. Okay. Okay. That looks even much better. So the next thing is, is to do the same thing for uh, the bottom text. Uh, so I'm going to call this eSports and, you know, probably get the word text. So I'm going to do this really quick. Uh, text. All right. Set this to white. Okay. And uh, make this as big as you want i guess uh put it in the center uh like so okay let's see how big this is yeah it's pretty big okay uh object and choose um expand yeah there we go expand then go to effects uh, um warp and choose arch there we go um i think i'm gonna set, reduce this down a tiny bit to like something like eight or seven i guess uh click on okay then we're going to choose object and choose um, uh, expand appearance. All right. And as you can see, this too has the perspective slant. So I'm going to select this, come here to the perspective tool and select this and then just make this move out like so. Okay. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. And now this has a little different version of color. So as you can see, we have a dark red and then we have a kind of a light red. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, make a copy, uh, sorry, let's actually go to object, expand, uh, sorry, path and offset path, okay, and preview of four, I think, let's set it to three, okay, that's good, and right click and choose, uh, okay, right click and choose ungroup, so let's select the ones on the inside, okay, and then let's add in a gradient, but this time, uh, this gradient is going to be like a red and uh this one is let's actually add in the manual colors directly so this is going to be like a dark red and right and uh, this one is going to be more of a bright red okay and set this to negative 90 again okay and now we can select the one at the bottom uh, hold down shift and select the ones at the bottom All right and uh, press ctrl G and we can add in a color so okay double click on that and set this to the red color that we added okay and now you can see the same cool uh, shiny effect looking pretty good so once we have this we're going to do something cool we're going to select all this press ctrl g so the entire thing is grouped uh, make sure we align this horizontally and vertically and then make sure that you have the selector and press ctrl c and ctrl f all right so you press ctrl c ctrl f we have two copies now without clicking anything else I want you to click on unite so that makes it into one single flat object and uh, let's set this the color of this to uh, white for the time being okay and then uh, right click arrange and choose send to back so that sends it to back go to object path uh, and choose an offset path and uh, this time let's click on preview we want a pretty big offset path so let's actually make this uh, say something like 25 25 i think that looks let's say let's go for 30 okay 30 is good uh then we can click on okay and once you click on okay you want to click on unite again and we're gonna have something that looks like this uh and then i'm gonna just color pick uh the color from this so this is like a pretty dark blue so that's zero six zero zero two three oops okay there you go um let's actually let me go ahead and hide the background so we can see it. Oh, yeah, there we go. And small issues that we're going to fix pretty quickly. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and just delete that and uh, delete this as well. And then we can take this point and move this up like so. Okay, that looks much better. Uh, we have a couple of issues here as well. Let's just delete a couple of points that we don't want. All right. So this usually happens because of the wrong choice of font. But, you know, that's something that you can do. Just make sure you choose the right font. And here as well, we don't want all these holes. So I press P on my keyboard and then just start coming closer and deleting all these points. All right. So now what I'm going to do, as you can see over here, I have this sharp edge, kind of an arch kind of a thing. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm press P on my keyboard to get the pen tool. And I'm going to click over here and then just drag out a line like so. Okay. And then we can come over here. All right, and then once we come over here, I'm going to create this arc. Like so, there you go, we have the arc. 
and I'm gonna hold on alt on my keyboard and click on this which is gonna go ahead and you know cut that tangent off for me right then I'm gonna come over here uh, like so and then come over here and just close this up like so and uh, I'm gonna move this to the back so I'm gonna hold on control shift and the left square bracket key okay so this is what we have so I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna select this one and the one at the back and go to properties and unite them I don't see the pathfinder so I can go to window and manually get the pathfinder options it's down here and then click and so now this entire thing is one single image and the last thing we want to do is we're gonna to go to object we're gonna to go to path and then choose an offset oops sorry object path and choose an offset path and this time the preview uh, we're gonna set this to say something like 20 small number and I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK and at this time I'm gonna color pick the one that's here so which is like an orange text and then we can select all this press ctrl G to group them and we can bring in scale this in let's go ahead and turn back on background layer and this looks really cool super cool already all right guys so that's pretty much it on how to create this cool looking esports style mascot text effect this is the third version and like I said the other two versions are down below in the description if you guys want to check out and hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to mention that in the comment sections down below. Subscribe to my channel for more amazing content and I will definitely see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.